I'm very excited to talk about our mobile workflows today and uh, the fact that we now have a mobile app for you guys to start using. Um, so today we're going to go through a quick introduction uh, for uh, overall of Assemble and what we're doing with mobile. Um, so for those of you not aware of Assemble or what we are, what we do, um, ultimately Assemble is a web-based platform. Uh, we allow your teams to publish information from Revit and AutoCAD and other model formats uh, into the Assemble database, uh, all cloud hosted. So then the rest of your team just through a simple login has access to uh, share that information uh, with, with others, discuss it during meetings, uh, use for quantification and, and other workflows. And now uh, that information is shared to the mobile team as well, the field guys. Um, so um, what are we doing with uh, the mobile application? Um, our focus was um, to make this system easy to use so that as you pick up a, an iPhone or an iPad, uh, an iOS device anyhow, uh, we want to make it easy to use, easy to get to your properties, easy to get to your um, components within the model, um, ultimately section down things and, and dive in and, and understand the project overall. Uh, we wanted to make it connected. Uh, if you think about uh, any time you're working through your day-to-day, -day, uh, whether you're in a meeting or out on the job site or somewhere in between, uh, the idea is to be connected to one another and, and get information uh, readily available. Uh, and then uh, as you have your different team members uh, can, keeping that connection, the idea here is um, uh, real-time communication. So kind of digging in a little bit deeper on those, I, I mentioned some of this, but uh, you have direct access from, from your iPad or iPhone to your models as well as your views that you've created within your project. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with the symbol, uh, views within our system are uh, discrete queries of of different components that you're interested in seeing. That might be a bid package or uh, a work package or an overall model, structural system, or uh, so something else. You immediately within the iPad app have the access, and you, you see on the screenshot here, access to the quantities. So um, beyond typical takeoff and quantification, uh, quantities mean a lot of things for decision making on a job site. Uh, when, you, when you break things down and, and ultimately understand uh, what what those quantities are related to, uh, whether, again, it's a work package or um, a discrete you know, area that needs to be excluded from the project for the time being or a, a value engineered. Uh, those quantities are very important for that day-to-day decision making. And then as far as bringing information in from the field, we wanted to simplify the process of adding or editing properties. Uh, so we'll go through that in just a bit, but the idea there is that as you accessing the model data, you can uh, make edits and, and additions to that information uh, at any point in time. And then uh, using navigation features of, of the iPad and gyroscopic um, uh, movements and tilt and, and uh, pan, uh, we wanted to simplify the navigation so that it's easy to step through the project. For those of us that have an iPhone, you know that being connected is an important thing. And, and whether that's when you're standing in the field and working with the project team, or you're sitting in a meeting and need to look at a piece of information quickly, or you're standing in Starbucks uh, line and, and waiting for your coffee and interested in, in looking at information or keeping yourself busy navigating through the model, um, waiting in the airport, same kind of situation. You're, you're always connected. You have that information right at your fingertips. Um, I kind of want to share a quick story and anecdotal a little bit, but before we had a mobile app, when I was a user of Assemble, I was actually uh, connected pretty deeply to, to the model and all the things that we did in the model, and we used it heavily in meetings. Um, and I have here waiting in the airport. I, at one point in time, was heading back to a project meeting and, and got stuck at the airport, and I got you know, several calls about um, information that they wanted to see. Well, I had my iPhone in my pocket, but my uh, laptop was in my bag. I needed to get to a point where um, if, if I wanted to get this information, I had to you know, get set up where I could actually pull my laptop out, um, log in to assemble and get the quantity. I knew exactly where it was. I needed to get to the quantity um, uh, that they needed in that particular meeting as quickly as possible. So, so long story short, I pulled my iPad and my laptop out and my battery was dead. So I had to plug in and, and this, this tedious process to get to a situation where I could pull this information up. There's this a uh, little piece of information, it, it took long enough that at, at the point that I was able to provide it, it no longer mattered. And the whole time I'm thinking, man, if I could just get this on my iPhone, I, it'd take two seconds. 
And, and the idea here is, um, you know, the power of, of having everything right in the hand and in your pocket um, means that you know, while you're standing there, it's, it's no, uh, no work to just dig in and get right to that piece of information. Um, so that connectivity matters between um, uh, sharing information from uh, team members, whether you're pushing that information from the office out into the field or bringing that information back from the field and into the office. Um, ultimately, that can be production data, and you can get real-time updates from, from the guys standing out in the field tagging or associating um, installation information with things uh, right there. Uh, that gives you the ability to color code your model and, and get uh, quantity updates of that production information. Your guys in the field may need a discreet uh, look at some uh, tricky pour that they're working on, and your guys in the office can help uh, package that up and set it up for them. And, and as soon as they hit save on uh, their desktop, they're able to see that information right there on the iPad or iPhone in the field. And then as models update, as you guys all are familiar and, and aware, um, models uh, through the course of construction update all the time. So as those updates are pushed, you're able to share that information immediately. Uh, whenever you publish that into a symbol, um, your entire team has those updates. With, with those uh, kind of key features of, of what we're doing on the iPad and iPhone, I kind of want to go through a couple of quick workflows and then we'll dive right in and, and play, a, play around a bit with, with the devices. But a couple of things that we wanted to focus on as we uh, developed uh, our feature set and our application itself, giving the ability to connect QR codes. Uh, for navigation purposes, for selection purposes, uh, using barcodes or QR codes makes it really simple to um, jump right into specific pieces of the model uh, using information that's right there in front of you in the field. With majority of construction sites not giving, giving the ability to really easily walk around with a laptop in your hand, we wanted to give the ability for a uh, foreman or superintendent to as assist in pr uh, tracking progress of installation uh, throughout the course of the project. So. Um, having having the progress tracking workflow associated, it, it was a big important piece of this, being able to uh, bring that information in and then status it directly in the model. And then just kind of to briefly mention, we're going to go through some slides on these, but um, uh, work package tracking, uh, tracking issues, and then ultimately uh, testing commissioning for, for turnover documentation. So we'll step through a couple of bullet points on each of these and then get into the, into the iPad. So with associating barcodes or QR codes, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can take an inventory of codes out of the model, and there are QR code generators out there that you can create stickers or labels directly from that list of codes. Um, that information could come from your source IDs, um, so if you've got instance IDs. It could come from your system names or your system information or your uh, room names. Uh, it makes it really easy to create uh, some list, list of properties, export that out, and load it into a QR code generator and, and ultimately print, the, print those out. We gave flexibility to associate those codes to, to your rooms, your systems, or any, any property within the model. And uh, with, with those properties, you can then um, use the scanner to dial right back into it. So that uh, within any, you know, walking through the project, you can uh, use a code to jump into a location or uh, associate it to a system or a particular uh, air handler or VAV box or anything like that, you have the ability to uh, pick whether uh, you're using a property from the model or an assembled property or otherwise. I mentioned before and talked a little bit about um, progress tracking, and the idea there is to give a real-time update to the office and, and the entire team uh, what the status is of any given component at any, at any time. Um, my typical process in the past, it's been something that you, you may have seen this uh, graphic on the right side before, uh, tracking by bid package or by, by trade. What we'd like to look at is, is see things that are not started, uh, would be essentially zero. Uh, work in progress, give some status on those. Uh, behind schedule or complete. Uh, rolling all of that information up and associating it to quantities uh, gives you the ability to really quickly understand uh, at any given point where you are against your schedule. So this, this particular report was generated in Excel, uh, but we now have connections to uh, Excel directly as well as Power BI, which is another reporting engine, uh, giving you guys the ability to 
take this information directly from the field and put that, uh, you know, in no time uh, right into a report. So that update from the field into a particular, uh, maybe an OAC meeting that you're sitting in, uh, that's, uh, that could be uh, completely live, up to date. Uh, we have, uh, a, as we went through the development process of this, we have a number of, uh, of you guys that actually reached out and, and were interested in looking at work packages. Um, wanted to know how we could track um, a particular you know, material uh, quantity in, in a pour, or if um, uh, a system had been fabricated, shipped to site, was sitting in the uh, lay down yard or actually installed. Um, so being able to uh, track material as it moves through the course of um, the delivery stage and, and, and ultimately in place on the project. Um, and then essentially the, the other piece of this is that um, with work package tracking you like to know too what, what it's going to look like when you're finished with a particular area. Um, so using those packages uh, to, to step through and, and move around in a space gives you a sense of uh, what's next, what's logistics that we need to use around this, what are the safety protocols that we need to, to look at, and allows the team to have that visual as you're staying there look, looking at the empty space on site. Another key feature, a key, key workflow that um, we know product will enhance is actually associating information uh, related to issues, whether it be punch list or RFIs or uh, other general questions, sketches, um, directly from the field into the model and uh, kept in that state through the course of construction and ultimately kept as uh, part of uh, an index when you're using the inventory from that model uh, for, for easy access through uh, any of these different uh, workflows, uh, whether it be your formal process of punch lists or informal and pre-punch. Uh, whether it be associating these views to an RFI and taking that information to your design team, um, or it's just your general notes log. Um, I, I know that as we've been rolling this out and, and testing, uh, we have a number of users that are today actually stepping through the process of just keeping their own general comments about the project um, attributed to uh, a property right here, and it, whether it be issues and comments or or otherwise they have a, a set of properties that they're uh, tracking this sort of information in, uh, in the model directly. So, so lastly, uh, I mentioned before commissioning. With, with the process of commissioning and um, uh, testing for turnover, uh, it, it can be really difficult. I've been in a situation before where um, keeping a number of logs and um, a, a lot of data together for this at handover uh, there, there's not a real easy way to look at what the status is at any given time. And by using the model, it gives a very clear visual if you're able to turn things on or off or color code the model based on particular status of uh, where, where you are in the uh, startup and the commissioning phase of a project. I know that um, for a lot of projects out there, uh, this information has to be associated with the model in some way as part of your COBE handover. Um, so the handover documentation is going to have a lot of spreadsheets and things that you need to associate uh, directly to the model. And by using our application and potentially the, the barcodes or QR codes that are uh, stuck on the side of a, uh, an air handle or a piece of equipment um, may, give you that, may give you that directly um, right there as you're going through the commissioning process. So um, with, with those workflows identified, what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to pull up my iPad. All right, so uh, what you're looking at here is actually the screenshot I was just sharing. And the idea within this model is that I can navigate um, by pinching and zooming and uh, one finger to orbit and move around. And then I'm actually directly in um, the properties panel and uh, associating uh, issues comment right to a property. So if I step back out to the inventory, you can see that I'm grouped here by my category and I can select things within the model across my categories and all right so I'm going to go into a project and I'm going to go into a view and we're going to go through the process of associating barcode uh, to a room so if I go into this model I'm going to select the science room and I'm going to with my location field here I'm going to go scan from barcode and real quick I'm actually going to step over to my office door I have a QR code on my office store so it's going to actually grab that property Tim's office 422 there 
and it's going to associate it right to this field. So if you're doing this from uh, your project site, what you're going to want to do is have those uh, QR codes available or already stuck in place on the door frame or uh, wherever makes sense. And, and as you um, step through your location fields here, just scan that code and it's going to bring it right in and then give you the ability to navigate right back to that particular location. So one second here, you're going to see that. So what you see now is that I was actually able to grab from the QR code the piece of information that I needed about that. And so if I save this, now my location field has been updated. And so anytime I want to go scan and jump to a room, all I need to do is say scan code. And if I hit that scan code, then it's going to actually navigate right to that room. Additionally, I can either search um, by the list of rooms or I can search through my inventory of rooms. So if I select this, I can uh, very quickly and easily say navigate to enter. That's going to take us right inside the room. If I say isolate, it should navigate us right in there as well. Um, or I can select on the model and navigate into a room from within the model. Um, once I'm in these spaces, um, we do have and an use uh, gyroscopic motion so I can actually spin around and look around. Um, so if I'm going to step into a room, I can orient myself to that particular room and then spin and, and, and actually look around in space. Uh, additionally, I can uh, use the fly mode and, and tilt and uh, uh, tilt forward to move forward, tilt back to move back. And then as I'm you know, looking around, I can select components and jump right into the properties. So if I'm if I'm going to select these components, I can then associate something like um, my comments or um, issues about that particular component right here within my properties. So if I had an issue or comment here, I can type it in and very quickly grab that piece of information. Really quick, I'm going to step back out into another project and we're going to talk about tracking um, work packages and, and installation information. So within here, I've got a particular work package for uh, my structure levels uh, 21 through 24. I'm going to select that and it's going to be grouped by level there. It's going to give me my components. I can select an object. I can jump into the properties. And then within this property, I can see, I can actually see that my activity status has not started. And I can quickly uh, choose from a list of values here. And I'm going to select completed. And now this has been changed from not started to completed. So anyone else in the project now has that information updated um, across the board. A couple other key features um, that I mentioned before is we have the ability to uh, create section cuts and turn on or off vertical or horizontal section cuts. Um, so I've now, you know, very quickly sliced down the model and I can look at a floor plan um, or an elevation, uh, that sort of thing. So really straightforward to, to jump in and out of projects and in and out of different views and uh, quick access to see I'm looking at, you know, this particular model. I'm, grabbing information about uh, one hour, two hour rated walls. Uh, those are color coded, so I can turn on my color overrides and I can see where those rated walls are. If I wanted to just look at um, a particular level, if I say isolate and then toggle off the vertical uh, slice, I can actually then get that section cut um, to look at my particular floor plan that I'm interested in. Let us know if you don't have the mobile app yet, um, if, if you're interested in grabbing it. Um, please let us know and we'll give you access and we'll certainly walk through it with you and make sure you're comfortable and using it.